Hey guys, Aaron Dade here with King of Blueprint along with my wife Mary Dade and we want to talk about leaving the naysayers on the boat. Um, this is a message that was given to us and revelation knowledge for us during our rest restoration testimony that um, really has to do with not um, let, letting people bother you on your journey and letting you, them redirect you on your journey, letting God direct your steps. However, my wife has something that she wants to share, so I want her to share first, please. You're so sweet. He always lets me go first. I'm more long-winded than him, amen. Um, but really what God explained to me about this stage of my, uh, of my stand of my restoration process is leaving the naysayers on the boat. Guys, God is calling you to step onto the water. Okay. Standing for your marriage, standing for the promises that God is calling you to do is more about your obedience and your faith walk with the Lord, not what other people are going to say. So when he explained, um, cause he gave us the name, all the names that we have on here, guys, is the Lord gives us these names but leaving the naysayers on the boat. The naysayers could be your church. The naysayers could be family members. The naysayers could be friends of yours. It's people mostly that are familiar, that are um, very close to you. And when I was standing, um, when I had told my parents, like, you know, God is, God is calling me back. He's telling me that he's gonna restore my marriage. All the people around me looked like I was crazy. Wait, you're married with Aaron? What, how? Are, do you not remember how that marriage was? Do you not remember what happened? Do you, right? The naysayers, they're the ones that are on the boat. They have not been given the vision for restoration for your life. They do not know the direction that God is taking you. And so they don't have a right to speak into it, if that makes sense. And so, for example, like the Lord showed me when I used to idolize people, right? When I had a fear of man, when I had a people pleasing problem, you don't want to go against the naysayers because you want them to like you. You want them to accept you. But that's really where God was like, either you trust me or you don't. You're either going to sit in the boat or you're going to get out and take my son's hand and start walking on water. And so the vision that he shared with me um, for this season was I was sitting in the boat and Jesus was holding his hand out and he was telling me it's time. It's time to get out of the boat. And I had a choice to make to let go of what the people were saying that were filled with doubt, unbelief, worry, um, that didn't have the vision for restoration that God had given me, right? And so as I took his hand and I was holding Jesus' hands, both of them, I was looking in front of him. And I know you guys have heard me say this, but I was looking at Jesus. You can't look behind you when you're holding his hands, right? When you're holding your hands and you're walking on water, you can't look over here. You can't look over there. Distractions, naysayers. You can't look back at the boat. You can't look ahead. You got to stay right with the Lord. And as he showed me this vision, it was so cool because he said, I need you to stay with me. And as you stay with me, I'm going to lead you to your husband. And he was holding my hands. And before I know it, as we're walking in this vision on an island behind Jesus, my husband was standing in a tux. I'm not even kidding. I don't know if he even knows this, but that was the vision that God gave me. And so I knew that if I kept my eyes on him, he was going right, seek first the kingdom. I keep my eyes on him. I stay with him. The end result is we're going to have that restoration, restoration with me and God, and then restoration with my spouse. And so everybody at that time, guys, you got to leave the naysayers in the boat. They've never walked on water. They don't have the faith that God is equipping you to have. And it is also your obe obedience language with the Lord. So they're not going to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. Well, God's telling me, well, how do you know you're hearing God, right? They're not going to understand. They're not going to be able to comprehend. And so it's really about sowing into your obedience with the Lord and building your faith in what God is calling you to do. So that's my long explanation of how he explained it to me. No, actually, to me, that was wonderful because <laughs> it explained uh, um, how she saw restoration yeah. and how she saw, you know, walking on water or like being able to have that faith to walk towards me, even though she couldn't see me directly. You find a lot of times that standards or people that are standing for their marriage or standing on that covenant agreement, that maybe it's somebody that God just said, that's your husband or that's your wife, and you're supposed to wait on that to actually happen. You find that type of faith is so unheard of, yeah. and there's no real visions or how to execute this plan or what God has given you. And so it's very interesting to hear your perspective on it. It made me actually very excited to know that 
I was not crazy. <laughs> so, um, for me, the naysayers has to do everything with the standards prayer, as I call it, or was revealed to me, which is a Jeremiah um, complaint. It's called Jeremiah's complaint. It's in Jeremiah um, chapter 20, verse 7 through 13 is really the standards prayer. And it begins with Jeremiah complaining about the people around him. So what she's talking about with the naysayers, you know, um, it really begins with the fact that God is in control. And even though, you know, we look foolish as we're attempting to go forward with standing for our marriage, everyone is laughing at us. Everybody is saying that we're crazy. Every, like for instance, my family was just telling me, everyone except for one major person, my dad, was all saying, hey, do you remember you know, how she did this or how she did that? Are you sure this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing? Are you sure you heard God say right? Are you sure? And that yep. was me having to make sure that I looked at my identity mm -hmm. and I said, no, I know God's voice and I know what he said. And I know how he felt about it. I know how he felt about claiming my spouse. And I know how he felt about the cleaving to my spouse process where I can't, I have to ignore everybody else's opinions. It does not mean that I don't value them. It yeah. just means I, their opinions can't be a part of my journey specifically yeah. with God. So it, Honestly, it's very interesting to hear her point of view, but, but there were plenty of naysayers that I had to leave behind because they seen my past. And to be honest with you, you find frequently that as you're praising God through your struggles, you know, the naysayers are really saying no because it's easier for them. Yeah. They want you to stop talking about this. It makes them uncomfortable. The enemy uses this to get people to not talk about this around you so that you will give up or or to say or, negative things. Or not so, just that. Sorry, babe. But no, also, you're good. No, to, to add that, right? So many people, you should go find someone else. You should go date. You should go try that website. You know, that person over there had luck. You should just do that. Why are you doing all this? Like, because the, also their heart is for you. Because they do want, this is the truth, their heart is for you. They don't want to see you cry. But also, like my husband said, they don't want you to complain about it anymore. <laughs> they don't They're want They're tired you. of you bleeding on them. Amen? And so we don't mean to. I bled a lot. I had people literally being like, you're obsessed with him. You need to stop talking about him. You need to stop. Like, let it go. Right? Because their, their heart's in the right place, but they don't understand. They're not going through what you're going through. Right? That's part of that comparing. You can't compare. You're on, stay in your lane, and in me, you will remain. That's what God always says. Stay in your lane and in me you will remain. But also to go back to that vision, if you think, he wants me to explain this real quick. As I was seeing, and I'm, I'm standing in the middle of the water and I'm holding Jesus' hands. If I stopped holding him, I would not get to where he's taking me. And if I stop doing anything, we don't move. So no matter what, you have to continue going and walking with the Lord and trusting him to take you where he's telling you he's going to take you. So it is, it's, a, it's about faith and the walk on water faith that he's equipping you to have. They don't have They're They got boat faith. They got stay in the boat. faith. <laughs> so it's not, there's no comparison. Which is a, a very interesting thing for me because a, a lot of um, what God was talking to me about was preparation. It was more so about what happens when she gets from the boat. Because at the time, while mm -hmm. I was standing there in the tux that she's talking about, I might, I might have looked great, but I was not ready. Um, I There was okay. a lot of things that were inside of my heart that needed to come out. There was a lot of... Um, internal growth that I needed to do. My relationship with God had to get better. My relationship, even with myself, I talk to people about this frequently. Go look yourself in the mirror and say, would I want to be yeah. with me? And at that point in time, the answer was no. So even the naysayers, they are also saying that too. You wouldn't want to be with you. So why are you waiting on somebody else to want to be with you? You That's need, really good, Aaron. So the idea of preparation, your yeah. vision was also excellent because it lets me know what I was looking at, but from your point of view, you're looking at me in a tux, and I'm telling you right now, I was <laughs> not ready. But you ready. know what's so cool is that God is so faithful, he knew he wasn't ready. That's why in my vision, it didn't show the island was right behind Jesus. 
It literally showed him in the it like far away. I could see it was him. I could see he was in a tux. I could see he was smiling. I could see that, but I was far enough away where if I started jumping, I would have sunk. <laughs> I had to hold Jesus' hands and just, right? But what does that also show us? That God's timing is perfect, right? God's timing is perfect. So we don't want to rob, rob God of the journey he's taking us on, right? But also trust his timing. Because like my husband said, which is so amazing, that you know, it is, it's humbling to hear you say that, but it's true, right? Neither of us, I don't think I had a white dress on yet either, right? Like I was still kind of, I was still kind of in some old rags because I was still believing lies about myself. I was still learning how to walk in my identity with the Lord. That's why it's so important to go with the Lord. Seek first the kingdom, seek first relationship with God. Then no matter how long it takes you to get to that other island, it doesn't matter. You're enjoying the journey with the Lord. You're enjoying spending time with him. You're learning how, um, like I shared last night in in our I Am His Beloved community for women, right? I had to go through a season where he was healing father wounds. So I needed to be a daughter. I wasn't ready to be a wife. And he explained that to me. Like, you're not ready for this. You keep asking to be married and you just need to be my daughter. You need to see me as a father first. And so first it was seeing him as my father. And then he said, okay, now I'm going to be your husband. And then he showed me what a wife was, not striving through a performance mindset, but through striding, walking in his grace. Amen. And so, yeah. I think that it's interesting that she says eventually she saw me um, standing on the island um, because I could not see her at all. Like, okay, um, that's good. The way that God was dealing with me was, and it's funny that you say, like, oh, yeah, enjoying this time with God. Sometimes my times with <laughs> God were very enjoyable, but most of the time they were looking at the things that I needed to do as the leader to yeah. get better and be ready and have the strength to look inside and say, this about me needs to change. It's not right. There's something wrong with it. It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, And so we need to kind of adjust and look at these things the correct way instead of looking at, well, there's so many things that she needs to do because there was all I could really think about was I could think about what she may look like or what she may be, but I could not see her. Um, So at the end of the day, I think that, the naysayers, if I ever really focused on what everybody else was saying or what everybody else was doing, it would have taken my attention off of my internal walk with God yeah, and healing myself. Yes. Yeah. And so then that disobedience, for those of you guys that read the word a lot like I do, um, we just don't want to touch that subject. We don't want to be in but, disobedience at all. No, I'm sorry. But no, but you're right. Natural consequence of disobedience is double-mindedness is doubt is confusion is allowing what people are speaking over your life over your walk to hinder you and also what my husband said too what also will hinder you is you got to stop talking about god i need you to change him i need you to change him every time i would tell god that he's like i need you to change (laughs) i'm not gonna change him i'm gonna use him to change you and so that was also a big thing like my husband said he wasn't even seeing me right? God was like, yeah, we need to work on you. And the same thing with me. The more I stayed with the Lord, the more he would reveal things in my heart, right? Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Like the video I did a couple weeks, a couple days ago that you guys heard about the, the cup, what's inside your cup, right? What's inside here? What needs to be healed in here? Because you're not even ready to be the wife he needs you to be when I prepare him. So it's really about, right, that triangle. It's about you stay with the Lord, they stay with the Lord, you stay with the Lord, they stay with the Lord. Eventually, you're going to meet. And it's amazing because that's restoration. Yes, absolutely. I I just, for me, I knew that it was about preparation because he made it very, very clear that if, when it, like you talked about, um, at that peak, if I was not ready, we were going to keep going. You know, we were going to keep going. So I believe that um, when there's nothing wrong with valuing people's opinions, Mm -hmm. however, they can't be the priority. 
They can't be like you can't I, idolize I, them. Yes, I, I because then you know that that gets in the way of your walk and the things that you actually need to do, and God blessing your walk and actually multiplying the seeds that you're planting to create a better harvest. Yeah, and so on and so forth and so on. So again, this video was just about um, making sure that we stay focused on our journeys and. Don't pay attention to the naysayers. Leave them in the boat. Yes. We love you guys and God bless and talk to you guys soon. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button.